Hello, everybody. Uh, great to see you all. Do keep your cameras on if you possibly can. Um, it makes everything run much more smoothly in terms of a session like this. We're only going to be a dozen or so people. It's the last session of the second day. Um, so let's keep it as human and as interesting as we possibly can. And um, let, let's make sure everybody gets something high quality from this 30 minute chunk. So hello, welcome. I think everybody's back from the breakout rooms. We are officially starting. Um, it's nice to see you all. Um, my name's Judy Reese. I know some of you already. Um, hopefully I'll get to know some of you a little bit better by the end of the session. Um, my, um, my company is called Reese McCann. It's me and Steve McCann. We are specialists in stuff to do with remote gathering, online gathering, and indeed hybrid gathering. We work with teams to help them um, work better together online and have done that for quite a long time since well before the, the pandemic. This session, um, the idea is that we're going to be exploring the metaphorical shapes of the teams that you are in and that you will be in in the coming months. Um, and we'll be playing with this precision inquiry tool, clean language, that some of you have met before, but I don't think everybody will have done. So we'll have some fun with that. If you happen to have a post-it note and a Sharpie, now would be a good time to grab them. Um, and we'll use them an, a, in a moment. So grab a Sharpie and a post-it note if you've got something similar to that. But we can do without as well, we can manage. Um, lucky, Antoinette, if you're able to turn on your cameras and your microphones, please feel free to. We're a small group. If you're in a quiet place, do feel free to keep your microphone open. We don't need to feel obliged to be on silent mode. Let's make this as real as we can. Um, so that's the plan. Um, as a starting, as a warm up activity, here's a question for you. For you, this event, this conference, this whole meeting is shaped like what? That's a question which has all sorts of answers. Please draw your answer on a post-it note. For you, this event, this conference is shaped like what? If you're able to draw on a post-it, that's the best way with a Sharpie, and then we'll be able to see people's answers. Um, if you're not able to draw, don't worry, we'll, we'll use other means. Um, but uh, drawing is the best. So for you, this meeting, this conference is shaped like what? Let's give it, Harry, just give everybody a second to um, finish drawing. And then we'll ask everybody to hold their, their post-it notes up at the same time. By the way, um, the, the slides that I'm sharing behind me, um, Manteo has sh shared them in the chat. If you want to follow along on the slides in a separate screen or anything, do feel free. I'd much rather see everybody's faces and, and indeed everybody's drawings. So I'm viewing this Zoom meeting on gallery view. So um, you can choose, you can cho choose yourself at the top right button. Do you want to choose gallery view where you see everybody or do you want to choose speaker view where you'll mostly be seeing me because I'll mostly be the speaker? Um, it's up to you. So hopefully everybody's drawn or maybe written their answer to this question. This meeting is shaped like what? Please hold your sticky note up to the camera and let's have a quick look round. Oh, there's some variety here. Fantastic, thank you. Put them down. Let me call on a couple of volunteers to ask you some questions. Harry, would you be willing to, to go as a, a demonstration subject? Yeah, for me, the meeting is shaped like a, a group of, of islands. And I'm, I'm on an island in the session. And, and at the end, I'll go away from the island and I show up on another one. 
but um, most islands are not so connected. Sometimes there is a connection when you meet somebody you met before, but most of the time it's not. Mm -hmm. So what kind of group of islands is that group of islands? Well, it, it, it's a small group of islands um, because I, I only see the islands nearest to me. Um, and uh, there, there may be lots of other islands, but definitely there will be islands that I will never visit. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else about the island that you're on? The island I'm on? Um, well, it, it, it's, it's, it's not clear whether it will be uh, uh, like the other islands or not. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's just beginning and beginning to see uh, how mm -hmm. it looks like. Thank you. That's a brilliant demonstration. Thank you for that. Now, is there someone who's drawn something different to Harry who'd be willing to answer a couple of questions about it? Selena, was that a nod? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> no, for um, you, this is this is shaped like what? It's shaped like an infinity symbol. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that represents, I guess, this whole day and this meeting is, is kind of about learning, mm -hmm. uh, never ending. And is there anything else about infinity symbol? Um, I'm looking at it thinking, <laughs> um, well, I guess just that it's never ending, that it's one continuous flow. What kind of flow? Um, I guess it depends. Uh, there have been moments throughout this conference where I've gone, I've reinforced them learning that, that I, or something that I already knew. There have been moments where a bit of an aha moment um, and there have been other times where I thought, oh, I don't know what that is. I need to follow up on this. Thank you. Another lovely demonstration. Thank you for being willing to play. So what you've just seen is a couple of examples of people coming up with a metaphor to represent their experience of this conference. And you've heard me demonstrate the use of clean language questions. We'll talk about both those things during the course of this time, um, but I'm going to need to move quickly, I think. Let me first mention about metaphor. When I'm talking about metaphor, I'm talking about any instance where we're um, comparing one kind of thing to another kind of thing. And examples would include agile. Um, some of you know Pierre Nice, and he did a, an interesting project where he asked 70 people what kind of agile is your agile and they were all different um, another metaphor you're probably familiar with is the counterpoint to agile waterfall we could just as easily ask 70 people what kind of waterfall is your waterfall and we'd get 70 different answers what's particularly interesting about that apart from the sheer diversity of answers that people come up with is that metaphor, it turns out, is the stuff of thought, the native language of the unconscious mind. And how we think about things, the metaphors we use to represent things in our thoughts, have a profound influence on what we do. So if we were to imagine that this conference was like a waterfall, we would sit back and admire it, or we might dive in. But if we imagine that this conference is like a game, like a game, we're much more likely to play. So the metaphors we use in our thinking affect our behavior. And this is particularly interesting in this remote and hybrid remote world because the metaphors that are used to define the technology that we use has a profound effect on our behavior. Now, those of you who've got had a few years under your belt know that back in the day, back in the days of XP, P 
people talked explicitly about a system metaphor being one of the most important things to get clear about what you were actually building. Now, a lot of those metaphors nowadays are less explicit and more implicit, but they're still there. So if we look at some of the tools that are, are in use and some of the tools that are being introduced, um, for example, there's a new kind of Zoom, which is sort of an immersive view of Zoom, where they're explicitly introducing um, a metaphor of a classroom or a lecture theatre. Now that will do different things to the metaphor that's in the wellow space you've been in, experiencing today, where there's a me the metaphor is it's, an, it's a building and you get to move around in it. Um, if your metaphor is, what, one metaphor for Microsoft Teams I managed to find online is that it's like one of those meetings where they introduce llamas. <laughs> You'll behave differently to if you think that Microsoft Teams is actually a high quality environment for doing um, hybrid meetings. And that works really well. That's not true, by the way. Microsoft Teams is not going to make hybrid meetings any better than any other tools. <laughs> hybrid working, in my opinion, can be done really, really well. Hybrid meetings are an enormous challenge, which has not yet been solved by the technology. Um, but that's another talk. Let me then briefly, we talked about metaphor, let me briefly mention clean language. Clean language is a precision inquiry framework de devised by the late David Grove, who died about 10 years ago. Um, it's originally intended for exploring the metaphors that people use in their language which are the results of the metaphors they use in their thinking. And by asking these clean language questions, you can find out all sorts of interesting things about diverse groups, and that includes diverse teams. And it's particularly useful in contexts where you're exploring unknown unknowns in situations of complexity with unsolved problems. And it struck me that hybrid working is exactly such an unsolved problem, a problem which is probably complex. If you look around online at the moment at some of the things that are being written, of course, there are people who believe they've got all the answers, but between the lines, you can read that they really don't know. And there are far more people explicitly saying, we don't yet know all the answers about hybrid working. It's a much more interesting place than we thought we'd be going into at this stage. So what I was wondering is, would you be interested in having a little experiment with the clean language questions, thinking about your team or team of teams, um, or a team you're aware of if you're not currently working in a team. And just have a little play with these questions and um, see what you find out. Would that be of interest? This will involve you going into breakout rooms. If you already know you can't go into a breakout room, please pop me a message in the chat and then nobody's going to end up on their own looking like they're, um, they've got no idea what's going on. So think for this activity, you're going to need to think about a team, your team or a team you know. And you can think about it as it is now, fully remote, or as it will be in a few weeks, maybe in a hybrid state, choose. What kind of team is it? In the privacy of your own mind, think about this. What kind of team is that team? Is there anything else about that team? Does that team have a size or a shape? And that team is like or will be like what? Please draw your answer or write it down on a post-it note. I'm going to speed you up. So if you've only got words in your head and you haven't yet got a drawing,
that's okay too. Um, if you're not going to be going to the breakout rooms, now would be a good time to let me know. Um, or indeed drop off the call if that's your preference. So mostly we're going to be in groups of two with the exception of one group of three where Anna, maybe you could be an observer. Um, here's the task. All you need to do is jump into your breakout room and take it in turns. You're just going to have a couple of minutes each um, to find out about your, your partner's answer to that question. If you can, use only these two questions. You've heard me use them several times. What kind of X? And is there anything else about X? And let's see what you discover. So everyone's back in the room. I'm going to move quite quickly now because we've got six minutes before the end of our time box. Um, We'll, we'll do questions and debrief in just a moment. Just let me pour some more information into the mixture here. You might, if you want to carry on that activity in the privacy of your own mind and your own notebook, you might want to pick up this question. What would you like to happen with the shape of your team in 2021? So this is what, given what you now know, what would you like to happen with that shape? And you can pay attention then and you can ask yourself the clean language questions about your answer. And that can be quite a revealing activity. Again, you'll find this slide in the slide deck um, that we mentioned earlier. I'm also going to quickly mention further reading and other things you might choose to do. Um, a couple of books that you might want to get hold of. Um, the book that I wrote, co-authored um, about 10 years ago, Clean Language, Revealing Metaphors and Opening Minds, still good, still current, um, about to be translated into German is the latest news about that book, which uh, already in Russian and Japanese. And um, the other book I strongly recommend, particularly relevant for agile coaches, is Caitlin Walker's book, From Contempt to Curiosity. Um, really, really excellent piece of work about using clean language with groups and teams to help them overcome um, their challenges. Sits really, really nicely with an agile mindset. Also on that slide, you'll see a reference to an ebook, Your Clean Language Questions Answered, which of course is free and has got lots and lots of information in it about clean language and how it might be relevant to you and your teams. I also want to mention um, in the digital swag bag, uh, you can find um, not only a link to Your Clean Language Questions Answered, but also uh, I think they're 50% discount vouchers for a couple of our, our online recorded courses, engaging distant participants, which is a course about hybrid meetings and engaging online events, which is a really rich resource for any larger events you, you tend to organize beyond the pure team retro kind of size, anything that's involving multiple teams, larger groups, town halls, anything like that, engaging online events is very useful. You'll also find in the slide deck links to me on social media. Please do get in touch, stay in touch and, and keep connected. I also do a weekly link letter, which goes to about 4,000 people, um, which a lot of people find interesting. So do feel free to sign up for that. Again, the links you'll find in the slides. And Antonio's put them in the chat as well, which is great. So with three minutes to go before the end of our time box, let me ask you, what did you discover? in your breakout groups. What happened when you were asked the questions and what kinds of answers did you come up with about the kind of team that's your team? If you're not careful, I'm gonna pick on somebody. Okay, I'm going to pick on somebody, but do feel free to um, pass if, if I pick on you and you don't want to speak. So Hazel, you, you, you've broken the silence and you've, you've said something in the chat, so please uh, unmute. What did yeah. you discover about your team? Um, that we had like a sense of community, I think. Um, yeah, just sort of working together towards a shared goal and sometimes there are 
conflicts and uh, obstacles, but at the end of it, we all sort of work together. Mm -hmm. And how was it when you were being asked the questions? It took me a while to kind of really think metaphorically, sort of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but then once we sort of got talking, things started to come to mind. Yeah, just kind of changing my mindset, I guess. Hmm. Thank you. Who had a similar or a different experience? France, what was your experience? Sorry, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I went a bit like um, going into pictures in my head, I would say. Mm -hmm. And what difference did that make when you went into pictures in your head? Um, yeah, I think generally I'm, I'm thinking very visually. So it, it brings me kind of in, into the team and lets me feel the, the participants of the team more, I would say. Mm. like to feel more connected. Interesting. Thank you. And those of you who were in Andy DeVale's session earlier will have heard him talk about the importance of the visual in, a, in our mental processing. Um, not everybody, when they're thinking about metaphor, does it in pictures, but a lot of people do. And that can make metaphor more memorable and much richer in terms of the sensory experience than uh, try, trying to work without metaphor, which actually you can't do. We're using about six metaphors a minute in ordinary English. And um, it's almost, well, it is impossible to think without using metaphor. That's another a subject, another subject for another day. 